everyone. Welcome. We're so excited that you all were able to join us today. Um, my colleague is just going to share our PowerPoint. Oh, perfect. We have that there. Um, so as I said, my name is Grace, and I'm one of our early career recruiters at our corporate headquarters in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, just a little background on me. I attended Albion College in Michigan and now attend Marquette University in their MBA program. So I saw a few students from the University of Michigan, um, great area, but very excited to be telling you guys all about Johnson Controls, um, what our mission is, a little bit about our early career programs. Um, and then also we're gonna be doing an employee panel um, as well as a Q&A session. Okay, so who is Johnson Controls? Well, we started back in 1885, long before anyone was talking about carbon footprints or climate change. And so this is where Warren Johnson, our founder, launched a company to explore new ways to harness and conserve precious energy resources. And in doing so, he also launched a tradition of customer-focused innovation and he has inspired thousands of employees for more than 130 years, and that has continued to drive the success of our company. And now this is where Johnson Controls comes in. So helping to drive the outcomes that matter most through a full range of systems and digital solutions, we make your building smarter. And so a smarter building is safer, more comfortable, more efficient and ultimately more sustainable. Um, so you might be wondering, what is our company's purpose? So when I go to work every day, I'm thinking about helping us, our company build smarter, healthier and more sustainable tomorrows. And so we do this for our customers, our communities, as well as our planet. Um, and so I really love the impact that I'm able to make every day, as well as everybody else on this team is able to make as well. Okay, so I know you see a lot of data on this slide, um, but we started our purpose back in 1885, like I mentioned before, and we've grown tremendously since then. So now we have over 100,000 employees globally in 150 countries. We also have over 4 million customers we serve globally, and our products are now in 90% of the world's most iconic buildings. How cool is that? So when you're walking around your college campus or you're waiting to catch an, a plane at the airport, just think, JCI products are working tirelessly to ensure the safety of the people in the buildings as well as the environment around it. At this point, JCI has delivered over 35 million metric tons of CO2 reduction in the, mil in the buildings that our customers as well as our own. And we won't stop there. So now that you've seen our now that you've seen the purpose behind our company, let's find out about the power behind our mission. Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. The world needs visionaries, innovators, and creators with a passion to change things for the better. In 1885, long before anyone talked about carbon footprints or climate change, Warren Johnson launched a company to explore new ways to harness and conserve precious energy resources. He was ahead of his time in inventing the world's first electric thermostat. Since then, many of you have come to know us for our world-class building products. We have come a long way in our almost 140 years. Today, we advance smart, healthy, and sustainable buildings to drive impact for our customers. We're on a digital journey, powered by the innovation in our DNA, advancing building technologies for the entire life cycle of a building. We transform the environments where people live, work, learn, and play. In schools and campuses with inspiring learning spaces. In hospitals, delivering superior patient experiences. In 
data centers, making operations more efficient and secure. In sporting venues with exciting and connected experiences for fans. In airports with enhanced safety and improved sustainability. In the labs where tomorrow's breakthroughs happen. In our industry, helping our partners reach their net zero goals. Our data-driven suite of OpenBlue solutions symbolize just how far we've come. By using AI-driven technology, we're removing data silos and solving the greatest challenges for our customers. Our experts are breaking ground time and time again. We're working in the background, making ambitions happen. A team of 100,000 building specialists, delivering impactful sustainability, new occupant experiences, and respectful safety and security. We're everywhere, doing what we do best for the good of humanity and the planet. We are leading the blueprint of the future. We are Johnson Controls. I love that video. That was awesome. Okay, can we go to the next slide, please? Perfect. Okay, so now a little bit more about our products. So Johnson Controls supports all kinds of buildings. Um, and we're helping our customers to transform their spaces really into smart buildings. So you might wonder what makes a building smart. So this starts at the bottom of the image um, with our energy efficient HVAC products. And this helps to our buildings to stay comfortable so that those working in it um, are breathing clean air. And so we do this with advanced heating, ventilation, and cooling systems. Then we have our fire detection and suppression products. And so these help to protect high value buildings and people with state-of-the-art sprinkler systems, fire sensors, um, and detectors, control panels, and so much more. Then we have our safety and security products. Um, and so these help our customers' buildings to stay safe from potential threats um, with access controls, perimeter protection, mobile security management, and video surveillance systems. And then we have our building automation. Um, and so this is really what makes the building smart. So with advanced artificial intelligence and softwares, we're able to bring the buildings to life. Um, with system integration, remote monitoring, planned maintenance, and performance verification services. So with all of these products being used together, we're able to save energy and ultimately decrease the carbon footprint of our customers' buildings. Okay, so here's an image that simplifies our products in something you guys are all very familiar with, a college campus. So as you can see, the student center has advanced analytics that tells the controller where it can conserve energy, and it also helps to keep the building secure. Then as you can see in the sporting arena, it has threat risk assessment that keeps students watching the game safe. In the science labs, you can see there are special hazards, hazard equipment and exhaust fans preventing dangerous chemicals from harming students. So all of these products are working together to keep you safe in the classroom, walking around campus, and even at sporting events. So next time you're on your campus, take a look around, see if you see any Johnson Controls products. Um, I know some of the universities that you guys go to are clients of ours, um, so definitely take a look around for that. Um, oh, okay. So now that you guys have a good idea of what our company is, what type of impact we make, we're going to be diving into how you can become a part of this. Um, so starting with our internship program, our global intern program lead, Shannon Vukovic, is going to be telling you about our world-class future leaders internship program. Take it away, Shannon. Awesome. Grace, thank you so much for the the opportunity to join this evening. As mentioned, I'm Shannon Vujkovic. I'm the
Global Internship Program Manager, and I could not be more excited to virtually meet all of you today to briefly talk about the Future Leaders Internship Program. So you are probably thinking, what is the Future Leaders Internship Program? Well, to start, we are a Way Up Top 100 Internship Program recipient from 2022, and we have won a Chairman's Award. So if you're outside of Johnson Controls, you don't know what a Chairman's Award is, but I can tell you it is the highest honor a Johnson Controls employee can receive. But to give you some insight about the program, our Global Internship Program really is intended to give you a unique opportunity to achieve professional development through teamwork, responsibility, and ownership. And the program is designed to really help you build connections and learn firsthand about the inner workings of a global organization. And what I can guarantee is that you will get practical work experience, working on meaningful work and meaningful projects that have a real impact on Johnson Controls and the opportunity to not only shape your personal brand, but to build your professional global network. So I will say before we move to the next slide, I just have to say that I, I love these photos of our interns. These are real interns that were here with us in Milwaukee, Wisconsin last year. And you can see some of the volunteering opportunities on, on either side there on the left and right side. And then in the middle photo was at our national signing day where we commit to hiring and bringing back our interns to join us the following summer. Um, so if we move to the next slide, I've got a lot to cover in this one slide. Um, so what can you expect if you decide to intern at Johnson Controls? A lot actually. Uh, exposure to leadership and mentorship opportunities. We take the development of our interns seriously and also realize that you need a well-rounded internship experience not just with your head down for eight hours a day, right? So we have specially curated events, roundtable discussions with senior leaders across the globe, and then the opportunity to be mentored by these leaders. You get to participate in an eight-week innovation challenge with colleagues from around the world. And when we talk to our interns, they usually tell us that this was their most favorite aspect of their internship experience. Excuse me, but to tell you a little bit about the Innovation Challenge, right? It's a cross functional, multidisciplinary group project. So, probably something similar to what you work on in school that's going to really put you together with other future leader interns and a few of our experienced Johnson Controls business mentors to develop a business case to support one of Johnson Controls sustainability goals and know that you will be supported, right? We're gonna make sure that you are supported by strong business mentors. And for that eight weeks, you get to collaborate, ideate, um, research, and bring to life an end-to-end -end business case to support your team's idea and solution proposal. And from this challenge, you get real-life hands-on business skills and also help identify fresh new areas of opportunity for Johnson Controls. So leaders company-wide, right? They are building in time to their schedules to lead our professional development sessions. Each week, we host a specially curated professional development session just for our intern population. And again, it is presented by senior leaders across the company and across the globe. During these sessions, we discuss topics like sustainability, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, we talk through our digital transformation, mentoring, and a ton more. So our, our leaders, they will, they're gonna share, they're very transparent, right, during these sessions. And you really get some nice little nuggets of information during these sessions. They'll talk to you about our plans, best practices. And of course, you know, we'll, we'll have the opportunity to ask questions and engage those leaders directly, right? And that's what they're looking for. It gives you that additional layer of, exposure to leadership that you might not have had the opportunity to talk to them otherwise. Um, I will say, keep in mind that these sessions are always intended to be a dialogue, not a leader just talking at you. Um, so these, this dialogue is really the opportunity for everyone to learn from each other. And you know, we, again, we, we poll our interns, we poll our leaders, we survey and ask because we're always looking at this program through a lens of continuous improvement. Um, so we've heard, you know, the, the future leader interns, they benefit from the experience and knowledge sharing from our senior leaders. And our leaders, they benefit from the fresh perspectives and perspectives, excuse me, and 
innovative thinking that this next gen brings to the table for Johnson Controls. And another key component of the Future Leaders Program, every intern is assigned a self-directed virtual learning journey with approximately eight hours of additional upskilling content. So a big piece of your development here is learning the Johnson Controls culture. And we get it, we are a large, highly matrix global company, but we wanna help keep you on track in this virtual learning journey portion of your upskilling. It'll do just that. We're gonna help keep you on track. So we've prepared e-learning modules that include information about our company, and upskilling around business acumen, soft skills, growth skills, presentation skills. We even host a workshop on strategies and techniques for influencing your key stakeholders. The last bullet here is around volunteerism. And when it comes to philanthropy, it is a big part of who we are as a company. The Future Leaders Internship Program has historically provided volunteerism opportunities, both in person and virtually, just to ensure that all of our interns can give back to the communities that we serve. Each year we host an intern day of action, but this year to help support Johnson Control's goal of 2 million employee volunteer hours by 2025, yes, I said that correctly, 2 million employee volunteer hours by 2025, we are not just hosting an intern day of action, we're gonna host an intern week of action with global volunteering opportunities for all of those participating in the Future Leaders Internship Program. And then there's additional volunteering opportunities that uh, usually come available through our BRGs. So now, Grace, before I hand this back to you, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to mention our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as highlight our business resource groups our mission is to truly empower every employee to take an active role in creating culture that values uniqueness, celebrates creativity, and drives innovation. With that, um, Grace, I will hand it back to you to tell us more about our structured early career programs for full-time employees. Thank you, Shannon. Um, and I do just want to mention that BRGs are business resource groups. Um, so even as an intern and as and also um, in the early career programs, you have the opportunity to join a BRG. Um, and like Shannon said, these really support our diversity mission. Um, but thank you for that introduction. Um, I do also wanna mention that I was a part of the Future Leaders Internship Program as an HR intern. Um, we also have other members of our panel that were interns. Um, so it's such a great opportunity. Um, but after the internship program, it leads directly into our early career programs. Um, so we have three of our business focused early career programs. Um, so starting off with our accounting and finance rotational program, this is a two and a half year program designed for recent graduates um, to really get a well-rounded view of corporate finance and accounting. Um, and so during this program, you participate in six month long rotations. Um, it is located in Milwaukee and we actually have Noah, who's a member of the program on this call. Um, so he's gonna give you guys a little bit more insight on the program real quick. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Noah. Um, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, um, and I've actually been with Johnson Controls for about three years now. So um, I was also an intern for two summers here um, before starting full time. Uh, and just about seven months ago, I decided to join the finance and accounting rotational program. Um, so this program is definitely geared towards those of you who have taken an interest in corporate accounting and finance. Um, but what's really unique is that with a company this size, um, those five different rotations um, can be had in many different areas of the company. Um, a company this size has so many different opportunities in accounting and finance um, that this gives you the great opportunity to really understand what you want to do specifically. Um, and you can get just so many different other experiences. Um, this is, you know, this, this slide says that it's located in, in Milwaukee and, and almost all the rotations are, but uh, another great opportunity is 
um, the ability to actually do a plant accounting role where you go down to um, one of our plants and, and do a rotation there. Um, so just another, another great um, experience that can be had there. But in the background, um, you know, you aren't just a, a uh, entry level employee here in each one of these rotations. You're really an essential part of each team that you join, um, which really allows you to learn from all the leaders in different areas um, and really hone your leadership skills um, while actually making an impact. Awesome, thank you, Noah. Um, I do also wanna mention that we have accounting and finance internship opportunities. Um, so just something to keep in mind. And then for our pricing rotational program. So this is actually a new program that we started this year. Um, and so they work very closely with our accounting and finance rotational program. And so this is two years, also six month long rotations. Um, you also do have the opportunity to work at one of our manufacturing plants for one of the rotations. Um, and you do get to be involved in a lot of the mentorship and networking, um, as well as development opportunities that our accounting and finance rotational associates participate in as well. Um, and so this program is mainly focused on pricing, um, field services, financial planning and analysis, as well as supply chain. And then lastly, we have our supply chain development program, um, which is also a two year program, also six month long rotations. But this one is a little bit unique um, because you are primarily working at our manufacturing plants and our distribution centers. Um, and so I have Helen here who's in the program to tell you a little bit more about that. Yes, hello everyone, my name is Helen. And I'm in my currently in my first rotation here in Wichita, Kansas. And for me, it goes back to my experience as an intern. I was just an intern this past summer um, working with the logistics and distribution team. And I remember first thing in the office, I had to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement for a network optimization project. And I thought it was the coolest thing to be part of a secret project. Um, it involved the closure of two of our distribution centers to centralize our finished products and make our delivery times faster. And so I was part of this proposal meetings to stakeholders. Once approved, I was able to lead some of the meetings with the site managers and coordinated key pieces of this entire project. All that to say, it was a complex cross-functional project. I learned so much in such a short period of time. It got me out of my comfort zone and ultimately confirmed that I wanted a career in supply chain. So this program gives you the opportunity to get a little taste of four different areas within the supply chain umbrella. You get to travel to four different locations and just get a better taste of what is it that you wanna do and find your passion along the way. So. This is gonna make you consider roles that maybe you've never heard of before or never imagined yourself working in any of these roles. Like me, for example, I'm a business major and I'm working as an engineer here in Wichita. I never would have thought or planned for this to happen and I'm absolutely loving it. So it just exposes you to a world of opportunities that you didn't know they were available to you. And so, yeah, I think it's an amazing learning experience for you to find your passion within the supply chain world. Thanks, Helen. Um, I do also wanna mention that we have a very large supply chain internship program as well. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, I would definitely recommend checking that out um, on our career page. We can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so you may have noticed a common theme in what we're talking about and that's leadership. Um, so a huge part of our early career programs is building your leadership skills to ultimately prepare you to take on a manager position and a leadership position at some point in the future. And so for me, one of my goals at JCI is to be a manager at some point. So I thought it might be fun to um, talk with some of my favorite leaders and see what tips they have for you guys 
um, to build your leadership skills as you move throughout your career. So some of the common themes that I noticed in what they were telling me um, is that empathy is huge, being solution oriented, um, focusing on being data driven. Right now, data is everything. So our company especially is so focused on that. Um, and then also accountability. So doing what you say you're going to do and really being a driver on whatever team that you're a part of. Um, and so then these are a few quotes from some of my favorite leaders. Um, so Mike, he is a leader in talent acquisition. Um, he's a director of talent acquisition. And so he gives the advice of never be above anyone or anything um, because people want to follow leaders who see them as a leader, not just because of their job title. Um, so I love that advice from Mike. And then we have John Everett, who is a director in HR. Um, and so he says, make your intentions known, also create a strong network at all levels of the organization. Um, and so he was actually my previous manager and he taught me to network with all different types of people. Um, and that's actually how I ended up landing my job in talent acquisition. Um, I had a lot of conversations with Shannon, as well as Ronnie, and so now I'm a part of this amazing team. Um, so I always tell people networking is everything. Get Put yourself out there and try to meet as many people as you can. Okay, so we've made it to the panel portion of this event. Um, and so Ronnie Dent, who is a leader in talent acquisition, is going to be running our panel um, and she is going to be asking members of our team questions about their experience in Johnson Controls so that you guys can get a little bit more insight on what it's like to work at our company. Take it away, Ronnie. Thanks, Grace. Hey everyone, I'm Ronnie and I'm thrilled to be here. So thanks for joining us today. We have quite a few fabulous employees here on the call um, to answer some of your questions about what it's really like to work at Johnson Controls. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves first, and then I'll ask them each a couple questions, depending on how much time is available, because we want to get to your questions in the chat function as well. So, Craig, let's start with you. How about your name, your position, how long you've been at Johnson Controls? Thank you, Ronnie. My name is Craig Simpkins, and I'm the global leader for early talent uh, management uh, for finance at, uh, at Johnson Controls. I've been in the organization for 14 years, and my background is actually accounting and finance and supply chain. So I made a late career change and uh, now focus on um, developing talent, both early and mid-career. So thank you for the opportunity today, Ronnie. Hi, thank you. I am Heidi Summers. I am currently the early talent development manager for our supply chain team here at Johnson Controls. Um, I've been here for five, five and a half years so far, loving, loving every minute of it. Uh, I personally do come with a background in procurement and sourcing over 15 years of it. So kind of like Craig, uh, making making a little bit of a shift to now start focusing on two loves, right? Early talent development and supply chain. So thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Helen Paguada. I was born and raised in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. I went to school at the University of New Orleans, where I graduated with my master's in business administration just this past December. I started my journey at Johnson Controls as a supply chain intern just this past summer in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I loved it. Um, and then joined the supply chain development program right after graduation. I'm currently in my first rotation working as a quality project engineer in Wichita, Kansas. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Umba. I'm originally from uh, Congo DRC. I came here four years ago for college, went to UW Milwaukee, graduated in computer science um, in December 2022. So I'm currently at Johnson Controls in the IT rotational program in the IT asset management team. Um, so I started two months ago. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Noah. Uh, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. 
Uh, I've been with Johnson Controls for about three years now. Again, I interned uh, for about two summers there. And then after graduating, I joined uh, one of our enterprise accounts teams where I managed one of our large national HVAC service accounts. And just about seven months ago, I joined the finance and accounting rotational program where I'm in my second rotation. Thanks, everyone. Okay, Kevin, I'm putting you on the spot first. Um, it sounds like you are recently just like any of the students on the call and you officially joined us as a full-time employee less than two months ago. So I've kind of got two questions for you. A, why did you choose to start your career at Johnson Controls? And then B, if you could tell them, I'm pretty sure you started in finance, but now you're in IT. So how and why did you make that change? Yes. Well, when I joined JCI, I was already doing computer science. Um, so in 2021, I was, I was doing my computer science uh, uh, bachelor's degree, and I interned at JCI in the finance rotational program. So I was not doing anything business related. I was writing code, but it's, it was still nice to see that the company was willing to bring me in, uh, regardless of my uh, finance background, lack of finance background. So why did I join JCI? Um, I joined JCI because I really love the culture. Um, everybody here is open and you can reach out to anybody regardless of their role and they will be more than willing to invest time in you. And that brings me to my second point. Uh, JCI is a company that really invests in their employees. I remember being an intern and working on very relevant projects. Um, I wrote code for the internal um, company site. Uh, in the Innovation Challenge, we uh, ideated a product to help JCI meet their sustainability goals. And uh, they also really invested in our learning for our soft skills. I remember participating in a lot of uh, leadership webinars and things of that nature. Um, the last thing is that the IT rotational program was really a unique opportunity for me to grow as an entry-level IT professional. Um, kind of get a different taste of different areas and um, get skills in different areas of IT to, at the end of the day, become a well-rounded professional. That was awesome. Thank you. Don't go away. I might have more questions for you. <laughs> okay, Noah, you interned with us and now you're a full-time employee too um, in the finance rotation program. So how did you make that step from intern to full-time? Do you have any advice for us? Yeah. So, I mean, I would describe my transitions, you know, from my internship to my first full-time role and now to my current role um, as very rewarding. I mean, at every step of the way, Johnson Controls has been 100% invested and committed to my career development. So, I mean, to fully answer your question, uh, I want to take you through my career path so far. So, my internship was the perfect introduction to Johnson Controls and the corporate world in general. Um, it really allowed me to gain many of the essential soft skills needed for success in such a large company. Um, the mission and the culture uh, of the company made it very obvious that this is where I wanted to build my career. So as I was nearing graduation, I, I expressed to leadership that I wish to take the next step um, and take a full-time role with much more responsibility. Um, so that was greatly encouraged, um, and I was given the opportunity to learn the ins and outs of how we operate at the ground level uh, by managing one of our large national HVAC service accounts. Uh, the team that I was able to work with in that position was extremely helpful in my transition. Um, there was definitely a steep learning curve, um, but they were a very large part of my success there. Uh, and, and then after getting a year of experience uh, there, I, I decided it was time to make the shift into the finance organization and join the finance and accounting rotational program. Um, I figured this is the best way to gain the most experience and get the most exposure this earlier in my career. Um, and again, leadership and my peers around me encouraged and supported this because of their commitment to my career growth. So I can say the rotational program is only building on that commitment as there's endless opportunities to gain knowledge all around the organization, uh, build communication skills and take on leadership opportunities. Um, you know, since we move to a new role every six months in the rotational program, it's essential that each team you join is welcoming and helpful uh, when learning that new role. So my experience has been exactly that this far. Um, every team I've joined is very good at giving um, me everything that I need to succeed in that role. So I mean, overall, to describe um, my early transitions and development so far, 
um, I would say it's an invaluable head start to my career. I mean, this organization has afforded me all the opportunities I need time and time again uh, to challenge myself and form the skills I need for my career and my aspirations ahead. Oh my gosh, that was so good. I have like goosebumps on my arms. I love it. Awesome. Okay, Helen, we loved your supply chain overview, and now we want to know more without violating your NDA that you signed. Um, so I'd love to hear, what did a day in your life look like as a supply chain analyst? What do you work on? Okay, well, what when I mentioned the NDA, that was part of my internship. So I'll, that was just me trying to explain everyone that even as an intern, you'll be given real important projects and you'll be leading some of the major crucial parts of these projects. Um, so of course, when it was over, I was able to talk about it. So I briefly talked about that. That was my internship role. Now here in Wichita, I want to give everyone a little bit of a backstory or some context before I get to what a day-to-day -day, day -day life looked like for me. Uh, so prior to this role, I had never even stepped foot on a manufacturing plant, right? And then I get sent to Wichita, where we have one of the biggest, if not the biggest, manufacturing plant in the U.S. So we have over 20 buildings, and here we manufacture our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. So whenever we say HVAC, that is what we mean. So now that we know what happens here in Wichita, I can tell you what I'm working on, and I start my day with my morning coffee while I check my email, right? I make sure that I'm up to date with any tasks. I also go over my calendar in case I need to prepare for any meetings. Um, and then once all that is set, I put on my safety glasses and my sleeves and head over to the manufacturing floor. Now, this is my favorite part because I get to see how our products are made. I'm talking about from the very first step where we cut, mold, shape, and paint the metals to the way we assemble all the different components, the way we test for leaks or any other quality concerns, et cetera, uh, to the way we package and then send off, send off to our distribution centers. So let me just say it takes a village to build a unit, y'all. It's still mind blowing to me. Uh, but my main assignment this rotation revolves around non-conforming product. So this can be materials, parts, or units that do not meet the quality standards we offer our customers. So I spent most of my time in our quality bond rooms where we determine the disposition method that best fits the situation. So whether do we need to repair, return to vendor, or scrap, which we do not want because it affects our revenue. Um, but after observing, taking notes, asking questions, and understanding what we currently do and the reason behind it, I then make my way back to my laptop and create workflows, uh, step by steps, find ways to simplify some of these processes. Um, actually, I've found ways to digitize some of these processes. So I've put a group together and we're working towards a scanning system. But let me not get ahead of myself. All that to say, I'm here to find ways to improve, to make our processes more efficient and easier on our people. Uh, when I least expect it, it's time for a lunch break. And I'm lucky that there's other five, well, it's five of us here in Wichita who are also part of the supply chain program. Uh, so if I don't have lunch with them, I'll have lunch with my quality team who have been nothing but helpful providing me all the resources. Mind you, like I said at the beginning, I'm not an engineer. And so you, you don't get thrown into these roles without the right resources. You get the help you need. They point you in the right direction. And I'm very thankful for that because I've been here for less than two months and I've already seen some of my action items in motion. And I'm very excited to see what I can actually accomplish within my six months here. Um, so I do have other projects, like I'm also trying to create a layout for both bond rooms so that we have more organization and structure, which ultimately will benefit and help us with our disposition processes. Um, so all in all, every day is very different. Uh, and that's what makes it really interesting. Okay, that was awesome. Thank you. That really helped clarify what new hires can expect to do. And it sounds like so much impact. Um, right away. I can't believe you've only been here a couple months. That's amazing. 
Okay, Heidi, since we're talking about supply chain programs, from your perspective, like what's the most challenging part of being in our supply chain development program? And also, what are you looking for in the interviews? Since you're a hiring manager, we want to hear from you what you're really looking for. Yeah, sure. So, you know, just to kind of reframe again, um, I do come with 15 years of that progressive procurement and sourcing experience. So I've really always been in a supply chain field and, and been there for, for a good amount of time. What I'd like to say, we've worked through a couple of interesting business cycles in these years, right? So we've had, you know, inflationary periods, deflationary periods. We've had natural disasters. We've had all sorts of disruptors for supply chain. So I have gotten to see, and I would say that that is probably, you know, one of the toughest, most challenging parts of being in supply chain just in general, program included, is being able to keep up with the global supply chain trends, those disruptors. It requires, you know, being a flexible supply chain person who can adapt quickly to, you know, what the, the organization requires. And, you know, you're creating those strengths using your talents that you possess to, to plan for those things as much as you possibly can, while also reacting to the very real-time things that we're, we're focusing on. So there's an element of, of how do you plan for risk, how do you mitigate risk, and how do you work around things that are unplanned? So every day is changing, it's dynamic, and it requires a certain resiliency to adapt to these quick changes in supply chain. Now, what are we looking for? What am I looking for? The strengths in, in what I, what I want to bring into our team and, and create that talented pipeline is someone who can problem solve and quick thinking, right? And, and what process do you approach? So how do you think about things? What is your, you know, listen first, you know, then you start kind of coming up with some theories, you collect data, and then you, then you start making changes. Then you start asking about what, what needs to be done. Um, we want curiosity, lots of questions. You know, if I don't hear lots of questions, I do get a little concerned. Um, I need bravery, someone to kind of stand up and be able to take down some of your own roadblocks. We're always going to encounter them. There's going to be people that stand in our way, things that stand in our way. So how do we speak up about them? We want partnership, looking at it as Here's my goal. Here's your goal. How can we mutually agree on what the best process and procedure is in the way forward? Someone who has an open mind, you want to hear things through before jumping to a decision or telling someone, hey, this is what I think we should be doing. You want to you want to listen. Um, and lastly, you know, someone who's not afraid to dive right in, get their hands dirty. Um, these next few years are going to be formative for you in supply chain or whatever career that you're in. So there's no task, no job too small. Take them all, observe, work on them. You know, I think that, you know, there was a, a comment from one of our leaders about you, you need to demonstrate that you're working on these things as well. So always have an open mind to that. As long as we know it has an impact on our operators and our customers, at the end of the day, it's a smart decision. Awesome. That was great. Thank you. Okay, Craig, you're going to be my last panel question just so we have time for Craig or for Aaron and Grace to go through some of the questions in the chat function. But you've been a hiring manager for us for a while. You're responsible for running the intern program and managing the new finance associates. So you've got great experience and we want to know, like, what do you think makes our early career program so unique and why should anyone on this call want to apply for our rotational programs? Oh, that's a great, great question, Ronnie. So I think if you start from the top of the uh, of the pyramid, what makes our program unique is the fact that, you know, it gets, um, you know, it gets leadership support from all the way to the top of the organization. So from George Oliver, our president and CEO, Olivier Leonetti, who's our, our CFO, their hands, you know, they have their hands in, in the program and fully support it along with all the other individuals that, you know, their direct reports. And so when you look at organizations um, that, that are struggling from an earnings perspective and they, they need to make some immediate changes to try to uh, help protect earnings, 
these are the types of programs that they go after, right? That they'll, they'll cut an internship program. They'll cut an early career program. At Johns Controls, I will tell you, there's a fence around the program where um, we, we, we protect it because this is our pipeline of future talent uh, within the organization. We spent a lot of time, as Shannon mentioned before, developing interns because we want to convert them into full-time roles like a Kevin, you know, a Helen and a, and, a, and a Noah into the organization. So whether they come into a rotational program or if they if they just do an entry level role, we want them around. So I think that's unique. We have a dedicated team that manages this early talent. I can tell you, I've been in the organization 14 years. The first 12, I was in a variety of accounting and finance roles where I was running um, an early talent program for accounting and finance as a hobby. You know, I was doing it on the side. Um, you know, for 12 years. And then after that period of time, um, it was so valuable for the organization to, uh, to, to make it a, a success that we stood it up on a global basis. And we have a dedicated team that drives. It. You don't see that in a lot of um, organizations as well. You know, a couple other things, because I could probably talk about this all night, as people know, is, is that, you know, we have a very, very strong curriculum from a from a learning and development standpoint. Um, and, and and we always get the, you know, we, we work, I'll give you an example, we work close with our communications team. And, uh, you know, every time they see me walking towards them, they're going, okay, now what, you know, now what idea do you have from a, from a talent management perspective, because we're always coming up with new ideas on driving that talent in the organization. And by the way, it's not just the early talent uh, program that we focus on. We're focusing on all 7,000 finance employees in the organization. So you're getting that high level of professional, um, you know, in learning opportunities. And then the final piece I'll tell you is, is career planning, right? When you look at a company like Johnson Controls and the intern program and the rotational program, you need to look at it as a long-term opportunity at the end of the day. And what does that bring you? We spend a lot of time doing what we call an individual development plan, where we're helping you map out where do you want to be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, 10 years from now. And what are the steps that you need to um, you know, accomplish in order to get to those to those next uh, you know, phases of your career at the end of the day. We put a lot of time into it. So you always know it's going to be next because we're helping you plan, develop a plan to get there at the end of the day. Two other things I want to mention is, is, is on the whole career journey piece is that we, we like to rotate people every 15 to 18 months after they graduate from the program. Or if you're in an entry level role, the same thing. So you're always staying fresh in your opportunities. You're always learning new, you know, new parts of the business, how to use new tools and things of that nature. So that's perfect. Um, and then the last comment I'd like to make before I turn it back over to Ronnie is, is that, um, and it, this is completely random and off script, but it's like, you know, I, I, I leverage LinkedIn very heavily um, on a daily basis. And uh, one of my pet peeves is the fact that um, I get people who send me requests to hook up because they want to try to sell me something. Um, so during the first part of this call today, I've gotten several invitations from students that have included a nice note saying, hey, you know, great, you know, great you know, presentation today. And I'd love to connect with you and talk to you more about opportunities at Johns Controls. That's a huge, that's a huge step. Something that fires me up and I appreciate you doing that. So back to you, Ronnie. I love it. And good job about the LinkedIn plug. That's the best way to get our attention, you guys. So whoever's sent out requests already, amazing. Good, good, good job. Okay. I wish we had more time because I could talk to the panelists forever. But we want to answer some of the questions in the chat function. So I'm going to turn it back to Grace and Aaron, and you guys can call out questions and feel free to call on any of the panelists to help answer the questions if you'd like. So thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Ronnie. Huge thanks to all my panelists. That was awesome. Um, I feel like even I learned a little bit more about our company. Um, so like Ronnie said, Aaron and I are going to be monitoring the chat now, answering some of your questions. So let me turn it over to Aaron. Um, Aaron, if you want to introduce yourself and then ask one of our panelists the first question. Absolutely. So hello, everybody. My name is Aaron Haney. I am the North America leader for our accounting and finance internship and rotational program. I've been with Johnson Controls uh, for nine years now. So excited to join all of you here today. 
So the first question uh, that uh, I want to pose is, uh, Shannon, I'm actually gonna come to you for this one. Uh, so this is from uh, Parth and he, uh, their question is for recent graduates, what soft skills as well as personalities stand out the most? It's, uh, and then does JCI require experience uh, for <clears throat> the early career programs? I can answer that one, but if you want to uh, answer the first part, that would be terrific. The soft skills, right? Oh my goodness. I gotta, I'm like, keep in mind, Erin, I have not interviewed in well over a year. Um, and I, when I saw that question come up, I was like, you know what? I think that is, Craig has been interviewing for 15 years. I, I hate to deflect. I want to think about it for a second, but Craig, when, when you are, especially because it asks about the rotational program, what do you look for? What are some of those soft skills that you look for? What makes a candidate stand out to you? It, no, and thanks, Shannon, and I would be happy to answer the question. So uh, when we uh, when we interview candidates, whether it's an intern or for the rotational program, I, I can tell you that, and people who interview with me will tell you the same thing, within about three minutes, I'll know if someone's going to be a good fit for the organization or not, just based on their personality. So what we're looking for is it, more than the, the hard skills part of the equation, what we're looking for is individuals that come in and that have that mindset that they're not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to ask for help. Um, they're going to come in and grab as much as they can and learn as much as they can, kind of like Helen said at the end of the day. You know, they have that positive mindset. They know how to effectively communicate. You know, they can work together as a team. Um, and they get it. They they have a defined path in their head already of this is what I want to do in my career. And John's Controls offers me that perfect opportunity at the end of the day. Um, so you can just tell, you know, and, and individuals who are prepared for an interview are going to come in and be prepared for their role because, you know, that that's that's a huge step of coming in and you know doing your research on the company, asking people about their experiences, um, just asking tricky questions. I mean, once in a while, we get people that just come in and just stump us um, with questions that we've never had thrown in front of us before. So again, you know, it's it's important for you to go out and just Google it, but you know, how to brand yourself at the end of the day to be, you know, a great employee in an organization. You know, you want people to know who you are at the end of the day, because branding can work for you or it can work against you, right? And you want people to know who you are, like, you know, that's why we have the individuals on the call that we have today, because they, they stand out in the roles that they um, they all play in the organization. Craig, you made me think of, um, as you were talking through some of those pieces, right? I, it's, I think of some of the phrases that we use here internally at Johns Controls, things like stay above the line, right? Things where like you could totally get pulled down in, into the drama or the nonsense. You're going to be surrounded sometimes by negative people, not just at work, but you, you always have that one person who wants to be negative. So we have the stay above the line. And then every single one of us on this call, we refer to us, doesn't matter where we sit in the world. I'm in Milwaukee, Ronnie's in Arizona. I, I mean, it's Helen's in Kansas, right? We're one team. And that is how we look at our 100,000 plus employees, our 100,000 plus experts. We are one team. I love that. Um, Aaron, do you have any other questions to ask our panelists? Yeah, a few few other questions here, and I want to be mindful of time here. So, uh, Heidi, this is uh, coming over to you here. So, uh, and I know you touched on this. Uh, so, uh, when it comes to the qualifications for the supply chain development program, question is: uh, Can a senior supply chain student graduating in August or December? of uh, 2023 qualify for that program? Yes, so I am still looking for the best candidates to fill our next year transition in January of 2023. So that is going to be made available probably, you know, at the, at the end of August to, to go out and evaluate and start taking candidates along with the interns that we have over the summer period. Excellent. And kind of to uh, tag on with that here, another question is, and I know you touched on this a little bit, but if you want to expand, so what are some of those qualities that you're looking for uh, that is going to have a candidate stand out from others, both within the rotational 
and the internship uh, recruiting process? Yeah, so someone, you know, for, for our, our development program is maybe got a little bit of that experience behind them. You know, you, you've had an internship, you have been able to sit down and work through some real problem solving. Right. So you have moved from being a task taker and just listening and, and doing exactly as you're told to somebody who starts putting the pieces together to say, OK, here's a repeatable thing that happens. How can I make this better? Right. And it might be something as small as problem solving a spreadsheet that you're working on to make it more user friendly. It might be taking a look at a repeatable issue that pops up with supplier invoicing to take a look and say, why do we keep doing this? Maybe we should train up our supplier and have a, a communication so it just doesn't happen again in the future. How do we remove waste in our lives, but how do we problem solve through that? How do we take a look at a problem, analyze what to do with it, and make a change? So that is the type of personality that I'm looking for moving from an intern to a full-time SCDP role. Fantastic. Thanks, Heidi. Mm -hmm. So just looking at time here, I'm actually going to turn it back over to Grace, and she's going to close us out with some final thoughts. Grace, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Erin. Um, thank you for all the amazing questions. Um, I just want to thank everyone from, for joining us today. We really appreciate all the attendance. I hope everybody filled out the Microsoft form that we put in the chat. If you have not, please take a few minutes to fill that out. We would love to hear your feedback about this event. Also, we would love to get your contact information if you're interested in any of our future opportunities. Um, and then you can also view all of our job openings on our career page. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope everybody has a fabulous night.